back east. Actually, and look at all that sunshine. Hi, Mayor. Hi. <laughs> Actually, it's, just, it's sunshine in Vizenda. It's raining out. <laughs> it's so pretty in there. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody, back to uh, Gold Medical Jobs. And um, if you can see our, our, our focus today, our title is to healthcare workers, how can we help you whom health uh, help others? And uh, we're still in our pandemic uh, situation here in the United States and everywhere. And uh, I will just say that my many, many, many years as a clinical nurse, mostly in hospitals, but in other environments, home health and so forth, that my focus was not really when I went to work on myself. My focus was to use all my tools and practices um, to help others achieve wellness and health. And so, um, geez, what years were those? Back in the 80s, I was one of the first nurses. I was working for an agency, and I took care of uh, AIDS patients. And um, I've taken care of patients, well, you know, I can say this, with disgusting wounds <laughs> and horrible situations in ICUs. And um, my focus is always to improve health. It was not like, what am I going to get? Because I used all my tools and practices to be safe, to keep myself safe and to keep others safe. And we know about that cross, you know, universal precautions, number one, but then there was always um, uh, special isolation precautions for different types of things, tuberculosis, for example, or, example, or, or MRSA wound infections. And so, so we just practiced that, went home, took a shower, moved on. This is a little bit different because everybody in the world is being asked to um, use precautions. And um, I just was listening to the president a short while ago talking about how proactive he's been, that the moment he heard things were going on in China, he was on the phone speaking to people about making more masks, uh, protective masks, and um, what are the scientists doing about vaccinations, and doing a variety of things and uh, in his in his special way, in the way he speaks to let's people. Let's not go there, shall we? Let's not go there in that special way that he speaks. But, um, you know, of course, it seemed derogatory towards the Chinese, but in his mind, he was doing what he needed to do to prepare this country. So um, I have not been in the hospital um, from the health worker end for a while. I've been working in other administrative areas and guiding others that are in that environment as well, Mary has done that for many years. So we we think about you because we're we're part of that team, even though we're not physically in that setting anymore. And I want to turn it over to Mary for her ideas and how she helps and coaches others that are at, at what we call it the front lines. We're at the bedside. We're at the bed rail. We're um, we're in the clinics and the hospitals. So how can we help those, Mary? I know you can help. Well, one thing is, um, you know, obviously, you know, we hope everybody uses their practice to, to be safe for themselves. But, Mayor, um, Mayor, can I interrupt you for a minute? Is yep. there any way you can increase your volume? I'll oh, see sure. if I can do it at my end. My voice is usually so loud. That's not a problem. I know. Oh. oh, now that you're closer, it was a little better. Let's see. Keep going. Um, you know, you'll see my wrinkles up close. <laughs> you're gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Um, so anyway, and we do believe everybody's practicing safe. Um, patient care. You know, one, one of my colleagues, Carolyn McCallough, the sweet apple who works at Northwell, who I became friends with Northwell, posted a great picture. She had all her staff in full um, gear, you know, with the masks and the um, the eye visors and, and scrubs and stuff. And they were holding signs saying, we are here. You stay there. <laughs> um, the first thing that people can do, obviously, is, you know, it's allergy season. So if you right. know you have allergies, try not to go in and think you have the coronavirus because you have allergies. You know, that just puts additional workload on the healthcare workers. Um, and healthcare workers, I mean, one of the reasons it's so hard for them, it's not necessarily unless you're doing testing and you're in one of those pivot points, you have a lot more patients. In some cases, you have less patients because you don't have any elective surgeries going in. Um, you know, so your patient census in some areas is really down and in other areas it's really high. But the whole workflow and what I call operating rhythm has been disrupted, right? You're, you're operating 
operating rhythm, um, you know, now people are on mandatory calls every day. People are going for mandatory in services. Um, I was actually, my husband had surgery last week and, you know, the front desk, it takes all the patients when they come in, they register in and, you know, they help coordinate if you're going to see the patient now that you not have visitors and stuff. And they all got up and went to a mandatory meeting at noon. And I was like, well, that seems a little um, extreme. They could have had a meeting at 12 and then at one and had half of them go 12 and half of them go at one, as opposed to leaving this desk unmanned. And then all these patients are coming in and there's nobody there. So, you know, how can we help each other through this? Um, and so part of it is really thinking to yourself, as my rhythm has been disturbed, it's, it's also disturbing your patient's rhythm, it's disturbing your family rhythm. What can you do to try to get back to a routine? Right. We all live in routines. It's like kids, you know, kids, if you have children at home, you know that routine, if you have a routine, you're in good shape. It's when the routine gets disrupted. Um, and everybody who works has routines. But now this has changed the whole routine. There yeah. isn't really the same operate. I mean, you're having administrative um, requests coming down and maybe additional reports that you have to fill out. Maybe, the, you know, I there's a million little things that changes. But perhaps if, if instead of everybody just running into it, we step back and say, OK, now how do we execute this? that it's not impacting um, or making us crazier, I guess, you know, because, you know, you, the humans are good at making themselves crazy. You know, everybody I know, it's like, I think I have a coronavirus, you know, my, my kids, no, you don't, you know, yeah. it's, it's all it just, you have to sit back. I mean, if you've been exposed or if you've been in a high, you may, but you know, everybody's just um, needs to take a breath. And, and in healthcare, the amount of patience everybody is exhibiting is enormous. But when somebody loses their patience, have a little tolerance. Because, you know, I know telling patients, you know, families that they can visit is very hard, particularly when you have somebody that you love that's, you know, really probably brittle or may not be doing well. It's very difficult to be able to have that conversation and be able to stand by it when you're like, oh, why can't they scrub and go in? You know, you have your own emotions as part of it. Try and just everybody give each other a break, if you will. I, I really like that, Mayor. I um, we're we're all adjusting our sales. My daughter is due with her baby in about five days, and uh, her husband. So now she has to see the doctor every week. It's probably going to shorten now to every couple of days. But um, her clinic or her doctor's office has asked that she not bring any other persons. Well, she's very very pregnant. She's had some ineffectual, as far as we know, contractions. So she said, well, can you just drive me and stay in the car? Of course I can. Of course I can. I mean, I'm not sick. I, I am probably having allergies. We had so much rain and early spring, everything's blooming. So, um, yeah, it's easy. It's an easy fix. Yeah. I'll still drive you, but I'll sit in the car. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. A phone call away or a few steps away. If anybody wants me or needs me or she actually, her contractions actually did something. Mm -hmm. I don't think so because she's had contractions and then she can go back to sleep. So I don't think she's there yet. Anyway. Um, so if we want to nutshell that in, we want to say to healthcare workers. Well, understand that people are going, to be, are going to be more afraid because they don't have that support system with them. You know, there's a lot of people when they go into the doctor, they go into the hospital, you know, and well, we'll just use me and my husband, right? I'm the healthcare person. Right. I'm the one with the questions. I'm the one that, you know, is managing the whole thing. If he goes in by himself, a lot of that stuff's not going to help, you know, not going to happen. So if you can help people who are in that situation, understanding that they're a little bit more afraid, they may be a little bit more ignorant um, and colleague to colleague, you know, have patience with that. Gotcha. You know, it, it's just. um it's making us all take a pause and say to ourselves, okay, now how can I do this? How can I do this a little bit easier for myself? Because, you know, the panic that everybody has, and it is not lost on me or you, Rita, having taken care of the first HIV patients, that, you know, there's a fear that a healthcare worker is going to get it. Um, because, you know, you're good, you're more likely to be exposed than anybody else, right? Yeah. So, right. If you, but if you're taking your time and you're being thoughtful, you know what to do. You do right. it. You know, right. so, you know, do you practice the things that you know how to do? Um, that hasn't changed. It's just what's what's changed is for the first time in my lifetime, and I'm older than most, 
you know, the world is now focused on this disease, right? Which is, which is really not, I mean, it does have lethality to it, but it's not like um, as if Ebola was going around or whatever, right? Um, that being said, I know there are a lot of people who are immunocompromised, a lot of people who are in chronic care, a lot of older people, hello, that would be me. Um, you know, so it's a matter of really just trying to use some common sense. Um, and when you're with your other colleagues, help them out as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, taking time, taking time for yourself and others and, uh, and appreciating that you're, you're, the requirement here is more patience, more teaching. And, uh, and I agree, I agree, everybody, we are kind of moving in that panicky state. Like you said, you were there and everybody left instead of, we did those meetings, we had new equipment, we had new things we had to deal with all the time and we paced it. Some people go at one o'clock, some people go at three o'clock, some, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we if have you're in charge of people, think about that. And if you yeah. get overwhelmed, I mean, there's a great thing in Deepak Chopra, I think made this quote, it, it's basically, you know, stop for a minute, close your eyes, take a deep breath and think of what you're thankful for. And if you have nothing to be thankful for, you should be thankful for the fact that you can close your eyes and take a breath and be thankful. Right, right. You know I mean, because there's there's so much still to be thankful, and and that's so hard. But we know when we have gratitude, it does help. Um, I mean, there are many, many, many people who are being financially impacted. There are many, many people who you know are working tirelessly around the clock. Um, you know, so if if your family is doing that, have some patience for them. You know, try to make their life easier instead of being upset and worried and afraid. Um, and and that it's it's let's just all help each other out. And I know that sounds crazy because it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but healthcare workers in particular, too often, you know, we become like a family when we're in the hospital, right? Or in a clinical setting. Um, and just like a family, and you know, those of us who have siblings, you know, you, you may or may not be as tolerant of them yeah. <laughs> as you would a stranger, right? So well, just siblings and spouses and uh, children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My temper is shortest with, uh, with that group, all okay. of that group. Of course, yeah. and it's shortest with people that you work in elbow to elbow with all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so this is a time to say to yourself, you know what? Don't don't have that. Be just be more um, more patient and be more tolerant. I like it. It's very very helpful, and and perspective too. Are, I I would say, are you practicing a lot of social distancing and? Uh, staying home more than you you more normally would. I am, but I'm going out a lot. I'm doing a lot of walks. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, nature to me it gives me energy and, and calms me down. Yeah. So I would suggest that whatever yeah. calms people down, other than drugs um, or <laughs> uh, illegal drugs, um, you know, that's what you should look to do. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it is so sunny there. I'm, I am astounded. It's what, three in the afternoon? Yeah, no, this is just a light from the Zenda. It's actually raining. We're, ha we're having rain as well. Oh, you are. We're both. And we actually rain. need the rain. We haven't had rain in a long time. Oh, yeah. We're, so. we're, we're in a constant state of drought in California. So rain is always a positive thing. I know. All right. Absolutely. So um, I would say to everybody, we appreciate you. We know a lot of our colleagues or not only working extra hours, they're on call. And um, we appreciate your patience. Continue with your patience. Take care of yourself. And um, and be a little understanding of people that don't have the knowledge we have because they're going to be heightened. I, I've had people, I want to say now, for probably the last three weeks, saying, what's your take on this? What's your take on this? It's um, Well, isn't that what the problem is? Nobody knows, right? Th that and, is the you know, somebody <laughs> always knows, right? People want to be led most of the time. So most of the time, we we want. I mean, the flu, we know what it does. We know how it behaves. That's the problem. This we don't know. So even the you know you have leaders of the country, leaders in healthcare. I don't know. That that's very unsettling. Yeah, yeah, that's On, true. At a core level, right? It's very unsettling. But think of all the things we do know. We do know how to protect ourselves. We do know that a lot of people get this disease and don't get sick. We do know that if you're immunocompromised or you have lung disease, you're at greater risk. We do know those things. 
And we do know that at this point in time, there's no place to go. There's no distraction. You can't go out to dinner. You can't go to the movies. So right. there's a lot that we do know. And every day we'll get to know a little bit more. And I think knowledge is power. So yes. as people know more, they'll feel better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and this, this idea of, um, of staying home, it's not a bad idea to, to pause and do that, to, to have a little quieter time. We normally don't have that much quiet time or that much home time. I, I know even when we've traveled, particularly if you travel in the summer or the, the say the Christmas holidays, the winter holidays, the Easter break, um, I would drive different places all over the world, Ireland and so forth, and see beautiful homes and nobody in them because we're all so busy. So guess what? We don't have to be so busy right now. We can stay home oh. and whatever you know, it is. As I, said, like, I love reading. To me, being able to read is a vacation. Well, you know, if you're not crazy busy, which some people are, you know, and, and I want to thank the people who work in the supermarkets and the people who work in the banks and the people who work in the, the truck they're all, yeah. yeah, they're all working hard too. Um, you know, we've all said some rainy day we're going to do that. Well, guess what? The rainy day is here. It's arrived. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you look very well. And, uh, and we appreciate the support you give to others and uh, the coaching you've done. I know you're coaching. Um, you're co constantly coaching, whether it's Skyping or Facebook or emails or whatever. Uh, thank you for that, Mary. And, um, and all I can say to everyone out there is that we appreciate you. We want you to be safe and stay safe. And we think you will. We think some of these practices that are going on uh, are going to be successful. And, for example, I have friends, colleagues, friends um, that cannot get the flu shot for one reason or another. They have an egg allergy or they reacted in the past and so forth. So they have to use those practices of not being around other people that are ill, not traveling, wearing a mask, protecting themselves and so forth. Um, this is just a step in that direction but for a lot of people since all the information isn't in the information that is in guides us to this right we understand that people could be incubating meaning they have been exposed but they're not showing symptoms for as much as two weeks uh right. we know well, they that never show symptoms. yeah yeah they may suddenly you know, Rita, I, I think one of the main, main takeaways for this and, yeah. you know i've seen it in wellness but i'm seeing it more now is you have to take care of you the government's not going to do it. Physicians can't do it. You are the one in charge of yourself. You really are. And, and yeah. for so long, we, we've given that power up to others. You know, the doctor takes care of me, the whatever. It isn't. It's you have to protect yourself. I mean, if we had to learn things from like the lawsuit with DuPont or, you know, like all those like um, the Love Canal, right? Um, like maybe people now after this will have better hygiene as far as washing their hands go. Maybe they will be more cognizant of flu shots and being around people with the flu. Maybe it, that will be one of the positive outcomes that come from this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mary. Let's see. We've taken up about 20 minutes of everybody's time, but we hope right. it's been uh, worthwhile in, in protecting yourself and taking care of yourself. And we will check back soon because we have a little more time. And uh, our goal is to always uh, educate and um, what do we want to say to, to employers um, and to employees to, to, to just keep, um, what do I say, cognizant of the team spirit. It's uh, the good things don't happen alone. They happen um, with, with consideration to one another and helping one another. Um, and I think too that some people, because like you say, we're in that age group now, we're 60 plus, um, some people are a little bit more at risk for those reasons, whether they are ill or they are of a certain age or whatever the reason is, um, that might cut down on the employee um, number of people out there able to work. So that puts a little, another piece of strain. If, if you're the healthy one, you're the younger one, um, you're going to be called to duty. Do you remember, Mary, back back in the day when we were dialysis nurses, that there was a terrible snowstorm? And 
Um, we had the fire department and people helping to bring in our patients because dialysis patients, generally most of those patients need treatment for four mm -hmm. hours, three times a week. Um, that we were working crazy hours because- Oh God, that, that we worked crazy hours a lot of times. Remember we started, <laughs> there was a strike. We worked six, 12 hour days before 12 hour days were important and we were graduate yeah. nurses. Right, right, right. Well, we did doubles back then. So our shifts were oh, 16 yeah. hours. But um, but that's not, that wasn't our focus. Our focus was, here's the need. This is what we'll do. We'll just call home and say, look, we're staying for another shift. You know, and uh, we're waiting till the they can deliver our patients to the dialysis unit. And, um, and those teams, and I don't remember those teams, I mean, those times, sorry, those times as particularly stressful, I remember them as um, fun and exciting and getting the job done. There's like a lot of um, satisfaction in getting, doing our job and getting it done well, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it, it's a little bit different, but you know, the same, the reality is this, it's a moment in history. True. And as George Harrison says, this too will pass. Oh, <laughs> it's a matter of just getting through the day, one day at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary. All right, Mary. Thank love you. you. Let me know when that baby's oh, born. Say it again. Let me know when that baby's born. Oh, we can't wait. We can hardly wait. <laughs> That's a little stress <laughs> there. Okay. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, everyone out there. And we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.